we're recording. Oh Hello, boy. friends. This is Mirror Reads, and we are playing a game of You're All Wrong. It's everybody's favorite game. Uh, here with me today, I have Tom and Zach from the Interesting Nerd Club and special guest, Glidus. Glidus, do you want to introduce yourself first? Nah. Okay. <laughs> Tom and Zach? Uh, I can introduce Glidus, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, this will be good. Oh, wait. Oh, no, no. Oh, now you have yourself. to. You volunteered. Zach, you, you dug this hole for yourself. You beat me to the joke. It's all yours. Oh, everybody knows that uh, Matt Bellamy is the lead singer of Muse, but me and Glidus are the other two guys. And, yeah, we've been there since the beginning. We were the first concert. If you go back, you can yeah. see us. Tom's the manager. No, no, I'm, I'm one of the Muse. <laughs> oh, there's multiple. It's, it, we're not Muse. We're like like Mew S. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the Pokemon. The other Come Matt Bellamy is TM. unrelated. <laughs> I'm here too. Yeah, to, to, Tom's here too. Hi, Tom. How are you? I've never been better. Uh, excellent. Zach, since this is your game, would you like to explain the rules for, for the people in the audience? Yes, I, lo I love how I've never... Uh, yeah, let yes, for the people too. in the audience. Yes, <laughs> explain it for them. So, yeah, yeah. Everybody here knows how to play it, obviously. Uh, um, so this game is called You're All Wrong, and Mira here is going to read out information that can... like She's going to read like a paragraph, basically, or a couple sentences that describes a character. It is going to be tailored in such a way that it could apply to more than one character, and it's kind of infuriating. We need to then guess if that character is from A Song of Ice and Fire or not. And then if you manage to guess correctly, you get to guess who that character is specifically in A Song of Ice and Fire or outside of A Song of Ice and Fire with point scaling for one point, guessing whether it's A Song of Ice and Fire or not. If you guess the A Song of Ice and Fire character, it's two points. And if you guess the character from literally any other piece of media that's ever existed, you get three points. And that's all there is to it. Uh, you'll probably ask to hear questions a bunch and be infuriated most of the time. And that's all there is. Those are the rules. Yeah, we, we basically invited Glidus over so that he would hate us and never play games with us again. <laughs> yeah, my, my day wasn't going poorly enough, so. <laughs> really wanted a, a healthy dose of being angry for 90 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> well, excellent. I have come prepared. I have come prepared with questions to irritate you all. So with that, we can get started with the first one. A wealthy narcissist who has a troubled relationship with a redhead. This man has a reputation for chaos and an astounding ability to avoid consequences. He vies for power against a monstrous being known for combating global warming. Oh my it god, just, it's literally me. I, just, <laughs> I hate this game so much. I was, I, was, I was about to make a literally me joke. I was going to be like, when was I ever wealthy? Uh, <laughs> Wait, do you and Glidus uh, have a troubled relationship with the same redhead? Yes, it's the same not, redhead. We're gonna, we're not gonna mention you. <laughs> uh, uh, okay. So today we learned that Zach is a homewrecker. Sorry, Tom. Oh, please. Wow. We've known that. Why do you think it took Glidus so long to appear in one of our videos? We had to, sort <laughs> of... <laughs> we had to wait for the divorce to go through. <laughs> That's just... I... I can think of a few people that this applies to, <laughs> but I don't know if it's that kind of episode. <laughs> so I will, I will say these are for the most part, like just things I came up with as I was like commuting to work or whatever. But I also tried to pick things, either fake outs or actual answers that I thought the three of you would all be familiar with. I don't know if that helps at all. Are any of them real people? Yes. So I pulled okay. from of Song of Ice and Fire, uh, music, movies, TV, books, historical figures, uh, contemporary figures. All of these things are fair game. Video games, I suppose. Okay. Oh my god. So, so <laughs> I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna take the first stab and say this is not Song of Ice and Fire. Alright. Zach says not Song of Ice and Fire. Gladys and Tom? I, I feel like, I feel oh. like it could almost be a character I'm thinking of. What do you mean by vice for power with what, what is it? Someone who is combats global warming he vies for power against a monstrous being known for right. combating global warming oh, no. so the monstrous being combats global warming correct okay that, that yeah. is technically my, correct yes my, my theory here has a very very like interesting definition of monstrous being but i can justify it 
Are you guys looking to... up the hair color of like George Bush's wife? No, no. You, I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to figure out how we could describe Al Gore as a monstrous being. <laughs> Actually, there's an SCP about this. <laughs> oh no! There's, there's, an, there's SCP an SCP for everything. There's, a, there's an SCP where there's an alien possessing him, and it's actually causing global warming out the back of his head, and that's why he's trying oh, to reduce global God. warming. It's to offset his own carbon footprint, which is massive. But I don't think Mira read that SCP for this. You don't know that. You don't <laughs> know my I life. I don't know that. I don't know your life. That's true. I'm speculating. Possibly incorrectly. You can see me do this more often on the interesting <laughs> <laughs> No. No, we're, we're, not, we're not speculating. We're asserting. I think it is not from A Song of Ice and Fire. I have to make a decision on this before we can move on. Yeah, so the fir- like the threshold question is whether or not it is Song of Ice and Fire. Get a point if you get that one correct, and then everyone who gets the first answer correct can move on and guess who it is for additional right. points. So being a Song of Ice and Fire specific, I assume that the Night King doesn't exist in the world we're talking about? Yes, yeah, so Song of Ice and Fire applies only to book canon. Uh, so show okay. is not Song of Ice and Fire. Because I was thinking... To give away my entire thought process, oh no, John's not a narcissist. <laughs> He's not really wealthy either when you think about it. Oh, okay. He does have a complicated relationship with the redhead, doesn't he? Yes. If George R. R. Martin writes a lot of himself in there, and George R. R. Martin clearly had a complicated relationship with the redhead. I mean, every marriage is oh. complicated. Oh, I think I know who, like, if it, if it could be a Song of Ice and Fire, complicated relationship with the redhead. Ah. Oh. There are probably more opportunities, though, outside of Song of Ice and Fire, so let's just say no and move on. All right. Well, you are all correct. This is not Song of Ice and Fire. I'll let you guys uh, riff and think, and I'm going to add your points while you, while you do that, of who, who it is not, or who it is from not Song of Ice and Fire. Excellent. Wealthy narcissist. Is Pepper Potts a redhead? I can never remember. <laughs> Pepper Potts is a redhead. Wait. Whoa. Okay, so it very well could be Iron Man. Right. <laughs> Wait a minute, and, and, that does actually yeah, track. Thanos is absolutely uh, reducing global warming. I yeah. like, functionally half. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's way smarter than my okay. answer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my answer. Thanks for telegraphing that one. <laughs> Before Mira said anything, I was actually going to go with George W. Bush. Oh, wow. I my my original guess was Luton Plunder, a poacher from Captain Planet, and I was going to argue that. <laughs> oh Captain my Planet god! Is that costume. how obscure this can get? <laughs> oh, I mean, uh, I do that, but I'm evil, like certifiably. Mira, I'd like to guess Luton Plunder, please. <laughs> All right, uh, Tom says Luton Plunder from Captain Planet. Okay. <laughs> That's such a great name, Luton Plunder. They had no ability to like have. Uh, they had no subtlety, I guess is what I should say. On Captain Planet, every villain's was name show. was like, like they literally had a character named Duke Nukem, who is not like the Duke Nukem. Huh. Duke Nukem uh, opened no relation. <laughs> no relation. Yeah, yeah. I think I think I'm sold on the Pepper Potts theory. I'm gonna have to go with Tony Stark. All right, Tony Stark, Glidus. I mean, it was my fucking idea. It works too well. Let's do it. Okay, so we've got two for Tony Stark. And one for uh, whoever that was from Captain Planet. <laughs> I wonder if it was actually him. You ever, you ever feel like you copied off the wrong person in class? <laughs> yeah, the, well, the person in class that you copied off and scratches off their answer after co- well, copying off. You didn't else. make your homework look different enough. The teacher's going to know. <laughs> well, Tom, I wouldn't feel too bad because you're all wrong. This is uh, yeah. Xander Cruz from Frisky Dingo. Oh, my I, God. So I actually very simple. Know... Huh? I said, I don't think I know any of those syllables. <laughs> so it's None very similar to Iron Man. None of these in the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. That was Xander Cruz, the prototype for Sterling Archer. I was going through I was going through a villain names from Captain Planet. One of them is Verminous Scum. <laughs> 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 so what you're oh. saying is we need to have interesting nerd movie night and watch Captain Planet. Oh, oh my god, that's movie. a Captain Planet watch through. That's a Captain great Planet video. villain name tier list. Oh my god, Ooh. Zach! Zach says names of either Captain Planet villains or let's go with Italian pasta dish translations, and we have to guess which one. <laughs> I hope nobody starts to be verminous scum at a fancy restaurant. I <laughs> well, there's a Cuban dish that's... called Old Clothes. I had a drink Compliments once. Compliments of the chef. Girl, so yeah, there are some weird food names like that. <laughs> Glidus makes a good point. Zach, is there a villain called Compliments of the Chef? <laughs> Tom, can you draw that? Yet. 
I got it. I'm on it. <laughs> uh, we're, we're on top of this. Because uh, <laughs> I can't draw. Mira draws as my cousin. She'll be on next. Remember week. the episode where they had to defeat the soup of the day? <laughs> soup, yeah. super. Uh, no, oh, I, I can't do it. <laughs> But, but the soup, salad, and breadsticks were unlimited, so the planet was overwhelmed. They had to call Captain Planet in. Oh, no. Yeah. All right. This I'm... isn't just a regular salad. It's a super salad. I'm getting, I'm getting oh. us out of here. I'm getting us out of here. Damn Number two. You. This young girl is known for her aggressive behavior and dislike of her seemingly perfect older sister. She has Come trouble on. expressing her feelings and often talks to herself about her dreams for the future. I hate this game. <laughs> Thanks Why for playing. Play this game? Blame Zach. He invented it. Yeah, like you're you're sitting here with the inventor of this war crime. You can send me to the Hague. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Mira, I have to ask. Do you have an older sister? Uh, that uh, uh te <laughs> technically yes, but also no. <laughs> uh, uh, okay. I was expecting more clarity on that answer, but I won't delve further. Thank uh, you. <laughs> that didn't help. <laughs> oh. Oh. I'm, I I'll buy it. It's Arya. Okay, so Gladys, you're saying is Song of Ice and Fire? Yeah, I'll, I'll buy it. Okay. I'll I take the bait. Is, this is not from a Song of Ice and Fire. Okay, Gladys says is, Tom says not. Zach? I'm torn. I, th I think this might be a double, like, uh, double bait where it is a Song of Ice and Fire, but it's also somehow not Arya. Actually, I can see, like, a couple of, like... Yeah, I, I was thinking that, too. There, there's, like... The resentment between siblings is not something George just used once. <laughs> so, something he, he uh, whips out reliably. But I'm, I'm going to go with Is a Song of Ice and Fire. All right. Tom is correct. This is not yeah. Song of Ice and Fire. Tom, can you tell me who this person is? Is this Anna from Frozen? No, although that is a good answer, actually. Oh, yeah, that is an incredibly good answer. Who, I, no, I no, 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 no one thinks Elsa is perfect. Uh, Anna thinks the, the Elsa The whole plot of the perfect. movie is based around her having a perceived weirdness, a, a disability that society shuns her for. That's fair. <laughs> I only watched it once. Now, hold on. I, I am going to turn this into a Frozen debate section. All right. Anna thinks that her parents think Elsa is perfect, because that is uh, true. Of, That's not what Mira of... said, though. What did Mira say? I don't remember. Yeah, judges? <laughs> oh, uh, a dislike of her seemingly perfect older oh, sister. So well, okay, well, mm. that's up to interpretation. Then I, I yeah. can see how how Anna might fit that. There's ambiguity yeah. in the question. Uh, the, this, for... this game is held up by weasel words. <laughs> for no for no points, Zach or Glidus, do you want to guess? You don't have to. I, I'm I'm thinking. I'm not. Uh, are you from the from... show? <laughs> I don't know. Are you... I like that. That is also a good answer. But you're all wrong. <laughs> Not a song of ice and fire. This is a. Uh... Williams. This is, yeah, this is Arya from Game of Thrones. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Captain Time did that to us a couple, I think, on two well, different he, questions. He's he a character who was not in the books, which is. Mm, I was mad at him. I was legit upset. I thought Captain Time hadn't seen Game of Thrones. He hasn't, but he knows about a character's existence and used that to, uh, right. to really uh, pull one over on us. It was real sneaky. <laughs> yeah. So you've actually given away my whole strategy. The answer to all of the rest of the questions is Kinvara. <laughs> uh. Well, th this one was actually uh, Helga Pataki from Hey Arnold. Mm, damn it. Damn Never it. That makes that. so much sense. <laughs> Move it, football I'm, head. I'm deeply upset. <laughs> oh, man. Uh. <laughs> All right. Next question. This young girl disappears in the night against the wishes of her parent. She goes to a land where people don't grow up and pirates lurk nearby. Her family is left in distress to wonder where she has gone. What this song are you talking about? What? Uh, I, I think I know exactly. Wait, read it again, read it again. Yeah. This young girl disappears in the night against the wishes of her parent. She yep. goes to a land where people don't yep. grow up and pirates lurk nearby. I got it. I, I think, like, this is very clever. When, <laughs> Maybe yeah. I'm, I'm making it cleverer than it is. Are you, are you asserting <laughs> that people never grow up on Dragonstone because they die before adulthood? Well, I'm going to say this is a Song of Ice and Fire. All right. Glidus says this is. is a song of Ice and Fire. Oh, Zach, sorry. Oh, I was agreeing with Glidus. I agree. Uh, this is 
It's, it's a song of ice and fire. Okay, Tom. Do we lose Tom? There's there's remarkable confidence on the panel. <laughs> yeah. For, for someone that is clearly Wendy from Peter Pan. Yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> I can't. When do? Where do people not grow up in a Song of Ice and Fire? And did, did I miss this chapter of uh, uh, the world, the world book? I think this. Uh, I think this is not from a Song of Ice and Fire. Right. Well, this time Tom Tom's got it wrong. This is no. Song of Ice and Fire. Go for it. Can I guess? Yeah, Gladys, please do. Actually, I want to hear Zach's guess first. Okay. Uh, my guess is Sarah Targaryen. Sarah Targaryen? My guess yeah. is Arya Targaryen. And Gladys gets it. This is Arya Targaryen. People do not grow up in Valyria. Whoa! <laughs> Okay, so of that was course. one point for uh, four, four plus five. Okay, I can math. If people do not grow up in Valyria because they're all dead then. <laughs> Correct. Or if they're alive there, they don't stay alive very long. Got you. I understand. In the same uh, way that was... people don't, in the same way that people never grow up in Chernobyl. Correct. Yeah. That was I, really I was going clever. You don't grow up in a pleasure house because so you have to be an adult to get in. Do you think uh, Arya bumped into a whimsical elf-like boy who could fly around in Valyria? Oh, I hope not. That uh, actually Peter sounds Pan kind of distressing. <laughs> Can you imagine George R. R. Martin's Played by take? Robin Williams. <laughs> oh, I love it. Novelization. He's Robin Williams in the novelization. <laughs> <laughs> See, I hate this game because it makes me angry with the presenter and also with me. <laughs> Well, this is good. I've got another one to make you angry, Tom. Okay, I'm so excited. This person is said to bring a dragon to life. He has uh -huh. two siblings, one aggressive and the other gentle. Many think he'll save humanity from an existential force. Meanwhile, war between human factions is imminent. Uh, Song of Ice and Fire or nah? <laughs> oh, Gladys, you should it's have been eight. here for it's the one. <laughs> Zach did like five in a row that were all Stannis, but none of them were Stannis. <laughs> it, it was great. It was a fun time. Actually, one of them was Stannis, and it was just infuriatingly placed. It was great. But it was the uh, one that was it, clearly Santa Claus. Uh, <laughs> oh, because yes. he oh, goes yeah, to the Arctic. And... <laughs> but his name starts and ends with us. Yep. Oh, sorry. There have been multiple games where I've done It's Clearly Stannis. I like doing It's Clearly Stannis. Everybody is Stannis. Stannis the character. Okay, well, this is clearly Stannis, but let's run it one more time so I know who else it is. Uh, this person is said to bring a dragon to life. He has two siblings, one aggressive and the other gentle. Many think he will save humanity from an existential force. Meanwhile, war between human factions is imminent. One aggressive, one gentle. I, I would love to hear how you've woken a dragon and not <laughs> told me about it. So I feel like that would have came up. I didn't uh, tell you about my torrid affair with Terry Lloyd. The, you know... That's true. That might have happened. Uh, <laughs> but I feel like you would have bragged about that. I thought you made that up. He doesn't like to talk about it. If you meet him, don't ask him. Okay, okay, okay. 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 It's good to know. It's Nobody to know. asked well, Harry Lloyd. <laughs> what was I going to say? My reading this initially was this was just a really interesting way to, like, describe Rhaegar because, like, everybody thought he was going to, like, you could say, like, raising a dragon is, like, his kids or whatever or something like that because he had at least two. But there's no way you would ever describe... Well, I guess Danny, like... But Danny wasn't born yet. Danny was mm -hmm. gentle. Danny was gentle as an infant. Yeah, this is true. But she also was born after he was dead, so it kind of yeah. feels genuine. I'm but imagining describing Viserys as a violent <laughs> infant. Danny being a violent infant track, so uh, surprised we don't have confirmation on that. We'll ask Rayella. Yeah. Any ideas? Do you guys need me to read it I again? Well, I can't not be a Song of Ice and Fire because George R. R. Martin invented dragons. <laughs> it's true. I know who it is. Okay, it's not a Song of Ice and Fire. Okay. While war between you wake a dragon, I'm going to say that this is from a Song of Ice and Fire because I have no good option. And Zach? I'm going to say it's not from a Song of Ice and Fire because Glide is sounded more confident than Tom. Okay. <laughs> well, that's, uh, it, you, you, you picked, you picked right. This is not Song of Ice and Fire. Unbelievable. Sorry, Tom. 
Do either of you have an idea who this person is? Well, I was going to say George W. Bush because I had no fucking idea. <laughs> and then I looked it up and he has like six siblings or something like that. Oh. That's so which which work. was the gentle, the gentle one? one Jeb? <laughs> yeah, Jeb. <laughs> can, we, can we please get a George W. Bush? Oh my god, it's Al Gore. <laughs> okay. So Glidus says Al Gore is act. Do you have an answer? <laughs> Put an Al Gore Wake a Dragon. He didn't even do that in Futurama where he would have had that. He did play Dungeons and Dragons. Did he? Uh, yeah, he yeah, plays he Dungeons and Dragons. He was very good. Yeah, he was the, the dungeon master. Years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love that episode. Oh, I always and... think of the Bender's Game movie. Whenever I explain to people why I don't play D and D, I cite that movie and I tell them I don't have an imagination chip. <laughs> That's funny. Let's see. Okay, now now I'm forced to think. Can you read it to me one more time? Yes. And Gladys, you can change your answer if you want. Okay, I'll try uh, to think. This person is said to bring a dragon to life. He has two siblings, one aggressive and the other gentle. Many think he will save humanity from an existential force. Meanwhile, war between human factions is imminent. Yeah, I'm trying to find any piece of media that has... I'm, like, going through the Rolodex in my brain. Looking mm. for any piece of media that has dragons and siblings. <laughs> I haven't gotten to more than two siblings. I've, I've maxed I'm stuck on, like, bringing a dragon to life. Yeah, that's the, that's uh -huh. the tough part. I feel a little like, bad about uh, this one. Is I don't think there's... Could you use some sneaky wording, perhaps? <laughs> I think all of this uh, is it's, sneaky. It's a game of sneaky wording, is. Yeah. <laughs> Although, like, a dragon. in fairness to myself, Zach is a much sneakier worder than I am. Is the dragon uh, an actual dragon? That's a great question. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Tom, you've watched Dragon Ball more recently than me. How many kids does Goku have? Goku has. Goku has two children. Two two kids. I believe that Pan is a grandkid. Yes. And Goku has one sibling, as far as I'm aware. Just Raditz. Yeah. Raditz. Well, okay. Because, like, you could, you could argue that, you know, the, the using the Dragon Balls fits the first half. Oh, true, we, true. We missed the straight-to-TV movie where Vegeta was actually one of three triplets. Vegeta does have one brother. Wait, really? Does Vegeta have a brother? Yeah. In a straight-to-TV movie. <laughs> <laughs> What's... What's Vegeta's oh, brother's he, name? His name Tarble. is Tarble. So they're Veggie Tarble. Yeah. Oh, oh I didn't know, sure. I didn't know how much like Dragon Ball lore there was in here <laughs> in this conversation. He looks a lot like Vegeta. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's, so it was, it was Gladys and Zach who got the first one right. Do either of you have a have a guess? No. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm just gonna say I'm just gonna say Goku and hope Goku. Uh, there's some Dragon Ball Does thing. Does Billboard Baggins have siblings? Oh, well, right, right, because that's that's why the Sackville Bagginses are trying to get a uh, bag yeah. end. Yeah. Because right, Frodo, right, right. Frodo yeah, of course. Isn't a nephew, he's like a, a cousin. Like a yeah, he's a cousin distant himself. cousin. Yeah. I, I've been listening to a lot of uh, In Deep Geek videos about Lord of the Rings lately. So, sorry, you're all wrong. This is Ender Wigan from Ender's Game. You explain <laughs> yourself right now. I'm very upset. <laughs> So, oh, you're going to hate me. So there are armies, right, up on the space station where they're like battle school or whatever. And they give him dragon army because it's cursed. But he brings dragon army to life and, uh, and revamps it. And two human factions. He has two sib. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so, well, and that's part of it. He's called Ender because everybody was limited to two kids. But, like, his parents were producing such special children that they were allowed yeah. to have a third. So it was like yeah. it's it's actually a key part of his character that he's the third. Uh, yeah, that's that's, true. that sure is technically true. <laughs> yeah, it was the dragon part I felt bad about because like whenever whenever we get into recordings and we talk about dragons, I always want to say your ass is dragon, but nobody knows what I'm referencing, and now you do. Anyway, number five. Okay, I'm excited. Sometimes called cat, this person often dreams of going home. They had a good relationship with their father, despite him being a somewhat stoic and distant leader. They have an irritating sister. That's a creative way to describe Lysa Tully, I'll be honest. It could be. <laughs> but because it could be a number of Ice and Fire characters, I'm going to say it is Ice and Fire, and you're trying to like pull the bait and switch in that domain rather than out here. Okay. Out in the rest of the world. All right, Glidus says, yeah. is Song of Ice and Fire Tom and Zach? Do we lose Zach? Oh, 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 give it to me one more time. Okay. 
sometimes called Cat. This person often dreams of going home. They had a good uh-huh. relationship with their father, despite him being a somewhat stoic and distant leader. They have an irritating sister. I think this is not from A Song of Ice and Fire. Okay. I am exactly with Glytus here on what you're pulling. This is A Song of Ice and Fire. Are you just going to expect Glytus to carry you through the whole game, Zach? No, I, I think I think we just came to the same conclusion. I will copy Ex- off one of the video, though, Except you did it two minutes points. later. <laughs> <laughs> Well, fortunately for you, Zach, copying off of Glidus' homework is paying off. Uh, oh. This person is from A Song of Ice and Fire. Okay, so I think it's Arya or Lysa. I was going to go with it's Arya, so that's my answer. All right, Glidus, are you going with Arya or because Lysa? I, I was thinking Arya, but then one of you said that's an interesting way to describe Lysa, and oh my, like, that works really well, because she was sometimes called a cat sometimes by a drunk cat. Peter. That is true. <laughs> But would Mira have thought of that? Almost certainly, yes. But, I mean, Arya is also called Cat. Uh, it, ha- yeah. it happens quite a bit. But that seems, like, pretty obvious that Arya is called Cat. Yeah, that's true. I am gonna say... Is Catelyn irritating? I know some people think she is. <laughs> I'm not saying anything for fear of giving away information. I'm gonna say Lysa, just so that we have a, a spread, a representation. If we both go the same answer, it's boring. All right, Zach, you said Arya? Yes. And Zach is correct. I was thinking it would be a toss-up between Catelyn and Arya because Lysa is irritating. And and that was actually... <laughs> I appreciate you giving me credit there, Zach. I didn't think of that sometimes Lysa is called Cat. You, you've you pulled Sneakies on me before, so I, well, and I, don't... I, will not discount, I will not discount you outsmarting me. You've shown the ability to do it. <laughs> Well, I don't. I don't know if I would say Lysa's uh, relationship with Hoster was like good. Yeah, that's what. That's what didn't sell me on sure. it. She would have said no. I didn't. Uh, I didn't get married to Peter. What the hell? <laughs> yeah, but, uh, that's probably why she likes hand. Peter. It's because she has daddy issues with Hoster. Uh, Ooh, come back next week where we oh, where we psychoanalyze the Tully family. Uh, next we'll question. Be, we'll be yeah, starting with Grover. <laughs> <laughs> All right, number six. This man is an exceptional leader, despite occasionally being a harsh disciplinarian. He is not God religious at the beginning of the story, but, beco- God damn it. <laughs> but becomes convinced over time that he may be a savior. He is sometimes depicted as bald and has one child. Sorry, Gladys. I, if I, like, because of the sound setup, if I'm talking, I can't hear you guys, and so I'm having to like, oh, guess sorry. if I'm interrupting. And I kind of see Zach making noises. Are you laughing or just... <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm cracking up. Uh. This is th- uh-huh. <laughs> okay. All right. I think. Oh, oh. This is not a song of ice and fire. Okay, Zach says not song of ice and fire. Glad and Tom. You... Damn you, Zach! What did you find? What have oh, you done? Tom, you're gonna be so mad. Oh no! Wait, Tom. Did you answer already? Um. I think that comedy comes in threes. I think that the third Stannis is going to be Stannis. I think this is not from A Song of Ice and Fire. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you're right. (laughs) All right. Uh, Glytus? I'm with Tom. All right. So you're all correct. This is not Song of Ice and Fire. For an additional three points, can any of you tell me who this person is? I know who it is, so I'm going to try and go last so Tom can't see that I'm correct. Because Tom will uh, know that I'm correct. Damn you. <laughs> How long can I filibuster here? I am playing like a real rat bastard by doing this, so Mira, you're welcome to tell me Zach just say your answer. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll, give him, I'll give him a second to think. I only did this with Captain Time because he was using chat GPT, and I didn't think that was fair, so I made him answer first. That, that is that. Uh, I mean, I'm not going to say it's not fair because uh, uh, I didn't set the rules for that game. But what I will say is I wouldn't do that because... It's funnier when you don't. <laughs> That's true. So I mean, it's funny I... when I'm personally digging through Captain Planet villains. I got one. <laughs> okay, I think I got one. Yes, yes, Tom. Is this is this Jean Luc Picard? Jean Luc Picard. All right, Zach and Gladys, do you have an answer? I do, Tom. I don't know how you did all that math to not get Benjamin Sisko, who is sometimes depicted as bald and becomes religious throughout the series. Damn it, Gladys. <laughs> um. Damn I'll, it. I'll, I'll just go with what the confident guy s- said. Well, they both sounded pretty confident. <laughs> Let's say Benjamin Sisko, because I, I don't think Jean-Luc Picard fits that well. Yeah, Jean-Luc Picard is not wormhole Jesus. I'm sorry, Tom. 
become religious. Damn you it. you have to know how hard I had to try not to laugh. I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, I, 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 I looked up whether I looked up whether he had a, a a late series son, not whether he became late series religious. <laughs> like, yeah. Well, I said the savior, didn't I? You could make that argument. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you know what? Yeah. Okay, so you know you know the radiation cancer planet uh, where all the kids get kidnapped to, and then Picard saves them. He's definitely Wesley's savior in that one. That's true. Uh, he. He is savior of civilization multiple times. That also true. You nerds. <laughs> Picard strikes me as like a mega atheist, though. Is no yeah. man. Yeah, Zach, you're right. I did all the calculations and put a negative a negative sign where one shouldn't have been. Yeah, exactly. What a what a wild turn of events. I also, Tom, I want to point out you're the person who told me, dude, you have to watch Deep Space Nine. So thank you for the points. <laughs> That's because it's the best one. It is the best it is. one. Right. It is the best one. You were right. And it also paid off. <laughs> Everybody listening, stop <laughs> listening to this video and go watch Deep Space Nine. Yes. You should uh, You should definitely do that. You can't tell me what to do. Stop <laughs> watching this video and go watch the, the Deep Space Nine Smasher Pass. <laughs> I'm very upset, by the way, that they made uh, Deep Space Nine Season 8 and there's no Deep Space Nine characters in it. For more commentary on Star Trek Picard. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. When you play with us, Gladys, guaranteed there's going to be a Star Trek question. All right, number seven. This person may be said to have three eyes. He is extremely powerful, even after losing the use of limbs. He is committed to saving the world, despite not always being the right man for the job. Nira, how much anime have you watched? Hmm? Huh. I'm willing to take those odds. I think this is not a Song of Ice and Fire. <laughs> All right, Tom says not Song of Ice and Fire. Glad it's in back. I, I, I agree for different reasons. This is not a Song of Ice and Fire. It's so specific. Um, go again. This person may be said to have three eyes. He is extremely powerful even after losing the use of limbs. He is committed to saving the world despite not always being the right man for the job. Yeah, let's go not a Song of Ice and Fire. All right, you are all correct. This is not Song of Ice and Fire. For an additional three points, can any of you tell me who this person is? I think it would be bold of me to go first. <laughs> all right. Fortune favors the bold. That's a fine point. All right, so I'm going to talk about the anime Yu Yu Hakusho for a couple of minutes now. All right, I'm oh. just going to zone out. <laughs> so... <laughs> you read okay. My favorite character is Kie. He has three eyes. He had at one point he gets a really scary, really painful dragon tattoo on his right arm and cannot operate it. And is committed to saving the world only insofar as his friends are committed to saving the world. My guess is Hie. Okay. And you're not allowed to cheat off me. My my answer is I'm, I'm using my uh, love of. U.S. presidential history here. Okay, Theodore wait. Roosevelt what? had a monocle at some point. Because he yeah. Had really bad vision in one eye. And what argument are you going to make about saving the world right now, Zach? National he talks. That everything that he did wasn't his attempt at saving the world in his view. He thought he was like saving the world. First of all, he was preserving nature by making all the uh, national parks, and he was a fervent interventionist when he thought it was justified. We, by today's definitions, would call it imperialism, but he would just tell us that we're wrong. I mean, it was uh, imperialism, but go off. Yeah, yes, correct. Uh, yes, but Teddy Roosevelt would just call you Critch and say that, uh, <laughs> you know, like, he's right. And Teddy Roosevelt also took a severe leg injury that he never fully recovered from, uh, from, I believe it was either a boat or a horse that he fell off of. Uh, so I'm going to go with Teddy Roosevelt. Zach, I really like the phrase, it was either a boat or a horse. <laughs> <laughs> One of those things that you're not supposed to fall off of. Well, I'm going to, in keeping with both anime and someone who has much in common with U.S. President Theodore Roosevelt, I'm going to say Tian Shin Han from Dragon Ball Z. Oh, Glyce, you got it. <laughs> fucking hell, no fucking way. Yeah, it's Tian Shin Han. <laughs> oh yeah, it's Tian Han. May not no be way. the right man for the job. You're right. He's like oh bot. He's like second from the bottom. Yeah, just just above Yamcha. I can't believe I got. Wait a minute. Is, 
when I thought of somebody with three eyes, he was the first person I thought of, and I immediately discounted him. Why? Oh it's not possibly the answer. So funny. <laughs> Oh my God. Well, and, and Tom, I like I assumed you were thinking Tenshin Han when you said anime, and so that's why I didn't answer. I have no idea whatever anime you were talking about, but I'm flattered you thought I knew some. Fully did not cross my mind. <laughs> <laughs> we, me, me and Tom talked about Yu Yu Hakusho a lot, because that's, the, um, that's what taught you about the social game Taboo, which we play often. Yes. We should do that on one of our videos one day. Uh, yes, we should. We should debut that quiz show we've been talking about. Not on this show, though. We got to focus. Yes. Question number eight. Called Robert, this man oh, is no. not always the best leader. He loves his children, but often doesn't know how to relate to them. He has been seen intoxicated in public on multiple occasions and is extremely fond of food. He is also known for his love of a woman whose name begins with the letter L. Called Robert. Please don't murder me. <laughs> Wait a minute. Oh, oh, this is not a song of ice and fire. Okay. Zach says not song of ice and fire. Gladys and Tom? Wait a yeah. minute. I, I can't think of who else it would be. So You it, almost got me. I'm going to say it's not. Surely not. <laughs> Wait, are you all saying no. it's not? Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I think this is not from a song of ice and fire. <laughs> okay. You all say not song of ice and fire? Yeah. All right, well, you're all wrong. Matt, it's just Robert, isn't it? It's just Robert Baratheon. I don't know who you guys yes, are thinking of. awesome. I was thinking of you know it. I know. <laughs> Linda, Leanna, you know. This is, uh, this is my, uh, this is my grilled by a pig burger. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Tower of Joy. I've always wanted to go to a Tower of Joy. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Wait, what? Are you gonna go to the tribe? <laughs> Come back next week, uh, where the interesting nerd club impersonates the entire cast of Bob's Burgers. <laughs> I would love to. Yeah, I, fewer things would bring me more joy. Bobby. You... Oh, oh, Bobby. <laughs> and don't bother bringing the mistletoe to bed, Bobby. But do bring me a snack, chocolate. Actually, did yeah, you I can't know? Can't believe Ray was the health inspector. <laughs> oh, what's his name? John Roberts started as a YouTuber. Uh, doing impersonations of his mother, and that's how he was discovered uh, and to voice Linda for Bob's Burgers. Oh wow! Yeah. So the only the, the way for us to get famous, you guys, is for us to just start impersonating our mothers. We, you forget this song of ice and fire stuff. I don't think that they let that kind of language on YouTube. <laughs> I first became aware of H. John Benjamin from his role as a tin of beans in Wet Hot American Summer. Oh yeah, I, I have a. I have a related story. I first became aware of H. John Benjamin uh, because of Adult Swim ads for his show, John Benjamin Has a Van. What? Hi, I have... I'm John Benjamin, and I have a van. But that's not all I have. I also have Bounce of Fury. He's fantastic. Hopefully that's a touchstone for somebody. Uh, audience, leave a, leave a comment if you know what Tom is talking about. <laughs> he also plays Saddam Hussein on the podcast Blowback. What? Oh yeah, that's what right. A, yeah. What a sentence that was. <laughs> <laughs> Question number nine. Called Rhaegar, this person is obsessed with ancient lore. He concocts a plot to overthrow the current ruler, but quickly changes tack and appears to remain loyal. He has an unusual eye color and wears black and red armor. Called Rhaegar. Yes. You said the words called Rhaegar. Yes. Th this person is called Rhaegar. <laughs> I also said Robert Pratian is called Robert. So How dare you. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and say that this is a song of ice and fire. Okay. Tom and Zach? Wait a minute. Oh. Wait a minute. Hang on. I'm looking for black and red armor right now. The only other Rhaegar I'm aware of is Rhaegar Frey. And they make no mention of his armor as far as I'm aware. I just got to... Mira, how inside baseball are we right now? Baseball? No, I mean, how, how like, self-referential is this question? Yeah, is, is, this a, is this a, like, uh, some people think that this person is Rhaegar, it's so. Yeah, is this person called Rhaegar? Because he's actually, like, because it's Mance Raider. Going, not a Song of Ice and Fire. Okay. I'm going, is a Song of Ice and Fire. All right. Well, maybe you should stop copying Glidus' homework because Tom was right on this one. This is not Song of Ice and Fire. 
Is this a character like from Inkwell Theory? The Tattered Prince was uh, Rhaegar because is this a character run, from HBO's run. Game of Thrones? No, I didn't. I I did not put any Game of Thrones takeouts in this. House of the this... Dragon. Oh, <laughs> no, it's not from House of the Dragon. Are we are we trying to assert that that Damon is still alive and is Rhaegar is is the show's Rhaegar? in the past no damn it no all of my quote unquote still alive uh batshit theories are based on like body swaps and not magic thank you very much yeah please i've we've got the rational body um still still alive theories over here <laughs> i wait a minute okay both of my inside baseball guesses are shot now uh <laughs> Ken, I'm gonna go with what is uh, what is John Travolta. Ooh, that's an interesting answer. It's wrong. I don't know how you got there, but I I do like John Travolta. <laughs> so this is uh, oh, you guys are gonna kill me. This is Doctor Rhaegar from Star Wars, the extended oh Star God. Wars universe. <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> what? Let me how see. is that spelled? <laughs> R A Y G A R Rhaegar. That's like exactly how I'd imagine it to be spelled oh in Star Wars. God. I was literally typing that. Uh, how dare you? <laughs> it's a, the antagonist of Ewoks, the battle for Sunstar. <laughs> Tom, reset the counter. That's the first time somebody has said those words in that order in 15 years. <laughs> <laughs> Somewhere, someone is erasing a chalkboard that says 15,000 days without incident. <laughs> Wait, how the fuck did you... Days without somebody remembering the Ewoks animated series. <laughs> Sorry, Gladys, what was that? How the fuck did you find this? That's a great question. <laughs> did you remember this from, from having seen it in the past? Or did yeah. you, like, look it up? Are you one of the ten people who watched it? No. Ewoks? This is, this is direct revenge on Zach. Um, <laughs> because in the last game... He pulled out Rhaegar Frey, and I said, not Sog of Ice and Fire, because I googled, and I got this guy, so I brought him back, specifically <laughs> for Menzak. My god, he does have black Rhaegar and Frey red too. armor. Yeah, there it is. And yellow eyes. Yeah. Yep. And he yeah. has a plot to overthrow the current leader, is that true? That, that's what he does? Yes. Uh, he has a plot oh to overthrow god. the Emperor, but then he backs out of it. Yep. <laughs> Joined by a formidable team of Imperial reconnaissance droids, evil scientist Dr. Rhaegar travels to the forest moon of Endor. Here it is. Wait, wait, wait. wait. This guy has an entire wiki page about him. It's, like, lengthy. It has a biography yeah. that lists where he came from and his motivations and, like, what happens to him. He appears in one episode of Ewoks. My guy he is on the villain's episode? wiki. What? Appearances. No way. Oh yeah, you're totally right. There's <laughs> apparently an article or something that like uh, what, what's the other thing he was in? A hyperspace exclusive. What the hell is this? In universe story written by. Oh my god. Star Wars lore is a mess. <laughs> somebody call Zeb. Huh? No. We need we'll never to fix see. this. Oh my god. Battle. Yeah. One episode of Ewoks it has this much lore. Oh my god, there's one there's one picture on his wiki page that has him synthesizing Tide Pods. This is a what fantastic is rabbit group? hole. So I think what we need to do, we need to have an, a whole episode of Interesting Nerd Club, because there's probably 700 of your people who are never going to watch this, and we'll spring this on them as a surprise theory. Oh, I love it. I got it. you all this, this Tide Pod image. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, he does synthesize a Tide Pod. Look at that. I'm going to do my laundry. <laughs> I, I like how I like how like Ewoks who live in a like primitive society on a moon of a gas giant are somehow like a major impetus into a galactic empire. Oh, they're a big roadblock for the empire. Yeah. Yeah, the, like, like teddy These bears little teddy that, bears that live in the woods. Teddy bears who have not yet entered the Bronze Age are the real, the real roadblock to the Galactic Empire's success. Ooh. I'll, I'll give you guys question ten, so we can put you all out of your misery. Last question. All this is all, all of it. The last one. This man. This one's worth mm -hmm. uh, ten points. Yeah, uh, Zach or Tom, if 
No, it's not. I'm sorry. <laughs> it appears you're right. The original scripts for Return of the Jedi were set on Kashyyyk. There you go. Oh, yeah. yeah. There's a hand-drawn version of Peter Cushing as uh, Admiral Tarkin in the Ewok series. Oh, my God. Number 10. This man is known for his association with the darkness, his unconventional appearance, and knowledge of an alien, of and fire. an alien sea creature. He can be oh, said no. to be a fan favorite. <laughs> Do it one more time. <laughs> this man is known for his association with the darkness, his unconventional appearance, <laughs> and his knowledge of an alien sea creature. He can be said to be a fan favorite. Wait, just, no, fuck you. <laughs> you're trying to bait me. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, Gladys. This is for me the specifically. Only I, <laughs> the only way I can possibly win is uh, if it's not a Song of Ice and Fire point-wise, so I have to say that it's not a Song of Ice and Fire. Okay. Zach says not a Song of Ice and Fire. Gladys, do you want to wait for Tom? Yeah. Or, <laughs> I, I, I had also thought this was not a Song of Ice and Fire, but I am less confident than Glidus is. I have an idea. Uh-huh. Oh, sure, yeah, I'll, okay, yeah. Oh. <laughs> is, this, is this Batman? <laughs> <laughs> he is known for his relationship with the darkness. That's true. And in, oh, the, and uh, in, in the Adam West friends, one, he's, his he's bat, for, uh, the shark spray, shark repellent. He's friends with an alien sea creature. Oh wait, yeah, Aquaman. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, they do, they hang out. <laughs> All right, so uh, Tom, you're saying not Song of Ice and Fire? Yes. Okay, Gladys. Okay, it's gonna be hilarious if we all say it's not a Song of Ice and Fire, and then it turns out it is Euron. So like, I'm gonna say it's not a Song of Ice and Fire. Not a Song of Ice and Fire. So for I mean, for three points. Zach, if you get it right and Glidus gets it wrong, you could tie, and we'll have to do a tiebreaker. Uh, Tom, I guess you could still guess for fun. Yeah, I'm having a great time. <laughs> I mean, I'm putting, I'm putting up my Batman. Okay, uh, Tom says Batman. I was actually I really pleased with that. One more time. One more time. I said apologies. Could you repeat it one more time? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> wow. I, I, didn't, I wasn't sure if you were asking me to repeat what I said one more time. Also. Oh no, I was repeating what you said. Okay. Uh, <laughs> silly me. Sorry. Yep. Is uh, there an echo? <laughs> <laughs> this man is known for his association with the darkness, his unconventional appearance, and knowledge of an alien sea creature. He can be said to be a fan favorite. What does fan favorite mean in this context? His association with the darkness. <laughs> you gotta. I need you to say that in a Christian Bale Batman. His association with the darkness. With the darkness. Uh, the city just showed you it's full of people ready to believe in good. Pray to me. Ah, oh, man. Uh, I mean, we're, we're still waiting on answers for, for Zach and Gladys, right? I need yep. to chew on this for a second. Wait, I, um... Sorry, I I just think that I should go last. <laughs> I, th I, I, I do. I also do. <laughs> Is this a Hearthstone card referencing the Hearthstone card, The Darkness? Mira, in your script, is The Darkness written with a capital D? I don't think you're allowed to ask questions. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, that's the, but maybe <laughs> might also be a TM. <laughs> darkness, darkness. What the hell are you guys talking about? You uncultured swine. <laughs> I'm about to be upset. In fact, I'm already upset. Zach, th I think this is one of those. If you don't know it right away, I, the, the problem is I know I know of a couple like universes that have characters called darkness because uh, I've looked this up before for this game. Uh, so like I know that the things I should be thinking of are either Witchblade or Kono Shaburishi or something like that. You're giving me uh, so many nerd points right now that are unearned. Uh, and the problem is I know nothing about either of those unless it's like uh, unless you're talking about Kingdom Hearts. That, this is obviously 
uh, Barbie's Horse Adventures 2 Mystery Ride. <laughs> it's actually, Zach, Kingdom Hearts is kind of a good pull, actually. Yeah. I have King admitted Kingdom... on air to liking Kingdom Hearts. That's that's true. Shame. But then... Fictional superhero created by Mark Silvestri Garth Ennis. <laughs> yeah, like... Here, uh, Zach, I, I, I was already I was already on the darkness as a character train because I did that before for what I ended up using. <laughs> what does that mean? I have so many questions. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think it's Sora himself. I know Sephiroth shows up, so I'm just gonna go with Sephiroth. Sephiroth, okay. Uh, so we've got Batman, Sephiroth, Glidus. Do you do you have an answer? Great lineup. Who so is far. noted rock god and world famous YouTubist Justin Hawkins? Oh, Glidus gets it. Is... I'm I'm very upset. <laughs> oh my god! The funny thing is, that was the first thing when I Google Darkness was the band. I thought there's no way that's possibly true. There's no way this is the band, the Darkness. How does he know a sea creature? Go watch the music video for I Believe in a Thing Called Love. <laughs> There's I, a giant space crab. I guess I need to crab. watch this music video. Huh? I guess I need to watch this music video. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. All right, I'll put, I'll put oh, it on the docket. Justin David Hawkins, English musician, singer, songwriter, lead singer, and lead guitarist of The Darkness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there it is. I right, can't so believe you didn't know that. So who could give us a rendition of I Believe in a Thing Called Love to take us out? Uh, I, I, know, I know you want me to, but... Well, Zach probably could. <laughs> It'd be much funnier for me to sing a song I've never heard before, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, have you, you've never heard it? Uh, I, I almost certainly have, because I definitely played Darkness songs back when I had satellite radio. Uh, but I, had, I stopped getting satellite radio uh, in 2019, and I don't know if that memory stuck. I'm going to be real. Yeah. Zach, absolutely no worries. I got this is the song from the end of Shrek, right? <laughs> what? No, that's accidentally <laughs> in love. <laughs> that's, that's Counting Crows. Is, that's Wait, Counting Crows. The Darkness no, no, is that... Glidus's band. Counting Crows is my band. No, no, I'm sorry. That we're confusing it with the Bonnie Tyler song. I believe in a thing called love. Oh, Wait, C minor. Put it in C minor. <laughs> but no, that's from Shrek Two, and that's the Bonnie Tyler song. Uh, I need holding out for the hero. No, no, that's the Bonnie Tyler song, Total Eclipse of the Heart. No, that's the one that, uh, actually, like, I don't know. I'm going to go into Bonnie Tyler lore, which I know a shocking amount uh, of, and oh. I don't need to do that to my reputation. My reputation on the internet's already gone through some shit. Uh, people like people have heard my song of Ice and Fire theories. They don't need to know how much I've researched Bonnie Tyler. I'd yes. like to solve the puzzle. It's, it's The Darkness Side of the Moon by Bonnie Tyler. <laughs> That's definitely her greatest album was The Darkness I've often album. wondered, is a total eclipse of the heart when the heart casts a shadow on the earth, or when the earth casts a shadow on the heart? I believe Ooh. that it, it must need... Well, yeah, I experience a total eclipse of the heart every time I walk under a tree. Or every yeah. time it's nighttime. Yeah. And every time yeah. we kiss, I get this feeling. <laughs> and every time... Because every, every time we touch it, it's feeling... Every time we kiss. I feel I can fly. Don't feel my heart beat now. Uh, I want this to last. <laughs> oh my god! You in my life. Um, I can do this part really. do, 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 do. I did a cover of this a while ago. I never released it. Uh, you know, it's really fun. When I was in college, those were the two songs uh, that I would always request at dances. Was I believe in a thing called love. And uh, whatever that one Zach was just singing that I can't uh, remember the name of. Every, every time we touch by Cascada. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that that oh, song I have a history. Cascada is a Pokemon. He evolves into Casca. Cas 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 form. I thought Cas it was Cascada. Damn it. Anyway. Cascada. Cas yeah. Uh, I win. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, congratulations, Glidus. Uh, you win. Uh, a sparkly rock. If you give me a PO box number, I'll have it have it to you in the mail. Nice. Uh, it'll probably cost me like a hundred dollars to send a rock to yeah. Australia, but you know, it'll be international shipping. I'll I'll, I'll, I'll start a GoFundMe to... to mail a rock to Glenn. <laughs> <laughs> and if you look in the description of the video, <laughs> help me mail a rock. Yes. All right.
No, uh, no, it's help me, help me, Rhonda is what well, you're thinking. Find, find somebody who just like sails like recreationally and have them hand deliver the rock. That's the smarter way to do it. Help they me, just, Rhonda. Help, help me, Rhonda. Zach, if they if they sails regularly, they're not going to make any money. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Oh. Okay, audience. Hopefully, we've uh, melted your brain cells enough for one day. Uh, interesting nerd club. Do you want to plug your stuff? Uh, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, Tom. Usually I plug the stuff. You go for it this time. Sorry, I'm crying. I'm thinking of more music plugs. <laughs> All right, I'll I'll plug we, your we, stuff. We have, we have plenty of time to make more uh, oh, in future yeah. videos. Uh, you can find us on the Interesting Nerd Club or the Interesting Nerd Network, where we talk about stuff that's not this stuff. Yeah. Um, uh, and also, uh, uh, we do. Uh, uh, this is a Zach creation, so you should go and check out Zach's solo channel. Zach from the club, yeah, uh, which I does not have uh, game shows that make you question your friendship, but sent his video essays. Currently, uh, currently, yeah. Um, actually, my next video essay is technically about a game, uh, if you want to describe it that way, that uh, can cost friendship. So uh, it'll be a crossover event. <laughs> Twister. Ooh. And no, interesting, I, Nerd mm. Network will be at some point hosting an acapella rendition of the album "The Wall." Uh, whenever we oh, get it. Yeah, yes. That's Absolutely. the one that goes turn around. It's yeah, not that's the right. wall. <laughs> that's that's wish you were here. God damn it, you go me home. Do it again. Plan. Oh my god. <laughs> Aren't you glad a special guest? Aren't you glad that you stopped by? Um, it did take my mind off of the impending dread of uploading YouTube videos for a little while, so well, I'm glad we could help a little bit. Would you like to plug your stuff, or are you just going to assume that everybody who found their way to my channel already knows who you are? Hi there, I'm Glidus, the main character in Glidus. Excellent. Uh, um, you already know who I am, so hello. <laughs> yeah, if, uh, if, if by some miracle you found my channel without having first encountered Glidus, uh, let me be the first to say, what is wrong with you? Uh, go subscribe to all my friends, and have a lovely evening. Uh, say goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Goodbye, everybody.